Okay, so in this lesson, we're, uh, we're talking about absolute value functions and transformations. Actually, before we get there, uh, take a look at objective one. We're evaluating, writing, and graphing these things called piecewise functions. And that'll be first. And then um, this is very foundational in, in algebra. We're going to be, number two, graphing absolute value functions by performing what I'm calling SRT transformations. That stands for scaling, reflecting, and translating. Like I said, it's fundamental. It's something that we will carry through a whole bunch of different parent functions throughout the year. And then finally, taking on objective three, those SRT transformations and applying it to any kind of function, maybe even these piecewise functions that we're talking about right here up front. So objective one, we're talking about being able to evaluate, write, and graph these things called piecewise functions. So evaluate, I'm taking an x value, I'm sticking it into the equation, and I'm getting an answer, right? Um, writing the equation for it and graphing the uh, equation too. So let's, let's just take a look at a graph here. So on exercise one, determine whether this graph represents a function. Remember a function is for every input, there's just one output. If inputs are boys, every boy has just one girlfriend, okay? So uh, take a second, just look at that, maybe pause it if you need to. Is that thing a function? Okay, so most people would look at that and go, no, that thing's not a function because it doesn't pass the vertical line test. But hey, take a look here. So you might think it doesn't pass the vertical line test right here at negative 2. However, here, this point is included at uh, negative 1, the y value at negative 1. But on top of it, where it overlaps, it's not included. So it passes the vertical line test there. Same thing right here at x equals 1 one point is included and the other point's not. So even though they stack up, it still passes the vertical line test. So this graph is what's called a piecewise function. It's called a piecewise function, as you can see, because the graph comes in pieces. So does the equation. Take a look here. So here's a definition of a piecewise function. Piecewise function, it's defined by more than one equation. Each one of those equations corresponds to a different part of the domain. So, whenever you write a piecewise function, you have one long curly bracket on one side. And then we're saying, for this one, it, it takes three different pieces. The first piece is negative 3 halves x plus 1, and then right off to the other side of it, to the right of it, we say, what is the domain for that piece? So for that piece, it's only good for x being less than negative 2. So, for example, this piece corresponds to that part of the graph. If I look at negative 2 on the x-axis, everything to the left of that, that's this first part of the graph on the left. Okay, And then I have the second part, x plus 1, and that only works if we're talking about x values between negative 1 and po or negative 2 and positive 1. So x plus 1, that's this portion of the graph from negative 2 to positive 1. And then finally we have just the constant x equals 3, I'm sorry, y equals 3, as long as x is greater than 1. So we're talking about everything to the right of 1. So here's what a piecewise function looks like, both the equation and the graph. So let's, let's try to evaluate a piecewise function. So here's my new piecewise function, g of x equals, and there's two parts on this one, 2x minus 1, as long as x is less than or equal to 1, and 3x plus 1 if x is greater than 1. So notice that your domain for this thing is actually all real numbers. So the domain is all real numbers. It's just broken up in, in two parts, right? The part where you're less than or equal to 1, or the part where you're greater than 1. So on the first one, when I'm trying to evaluate g of 1, what you have to decide is what part of the equation to stick it into. Do you get to stick it into the top one, or do you get to stick it into the bottom one? You don't stick it into both. I'm going to repeat that because it's important. You do not stick the number 1 into both pieces, because if you did, you wouldn't have a function. You would have two different outputs for that one input. So if I look at the domain, 
the part of the domain that corresponds to 1 is x is less than or equal to 1. So I'm going to stick this into the top equation. So this goes 2 times 1 minus 1. So I have 2 minus 1 when I simplify, which is just equal to 1. So on the graph, that, of course, is the point 1, 1. Okay, now let's look at g of 5. Again, I only stick it into one part, either the top equation or the bottom equation. Which one is it going to be this time? Well, this time 5, the number 5, is greater than 1, so I'm going to stick that into the bottom equation. 3 times 5 plus 1. So I've got uh, 15 plus 1 when I simplify, 16. This corresponds to the point on the graph, 5, 16. Okay, and then finally, g of negative 3. g of negative 3. Which part of the graph does it go to? Does it go with the top equation or the bottom? This one goes with the top because negative 3 is less than 1. So 2 times negative 3 minus 1. I get a negative 6 minus 1, which is negative 7. That corresponds to the point on the graph, negative 3, negative 7. Okay, so now what we just did is evaluated a piecewise function at some different x values. Now let's try to graph one. It's the same exact equation. I'm just going to try to graph it now. Now, what I would suggest to you is to take this point at which this point at which the domain breaks, which is x equals 1, and on your graph, I'm just going to draw at x equals 1 this dashed line. And the reason why I'm doing that is it's just a reminder that half of my graph is going to be to the right of it and half of my graph is going to be to the left of it. Your actual graph doesn't have this dashed line in it. It's just a helpful thing for you to do the graph with. Okay, so now whenever I go to graph the top part of the line, I don't necessarily start at the y-intercept like I would if I was uh, just given that equation of a line. I'm going to start where the domain starts, which is at 1. So I'm going to plug the number 1 into that part of the equation. 2 times 1 minus 1, and I did this right there on the previous exercise, that's equal to 1, which is the point 1, 1. So this graph is going to start at the point 1, 1. It gets colored in because it's equal to 1. Okay? Now, I'm going to use the slope of 2, 2 over 1, Whoops, what is that? I don't know. 2 over 1, up 2, and right 1, right? So if I go up 2 and right 1, here's a dot. Stop. What's the problem with that? The problem with that is that it says that this part of the equation only works when x is less than 1, less than or equal to 1. What I just drew was greater than 1, so that point actually can't be on the graph. I need to go in the other direction. So make this a negative 2 over a negative 1. Down 2, right 1, oh, left 1. Down 2, left 1, down 2, left 1. That should be good. Draw this awesomely straight line. OK, there's one half of the graph. The second half of the graph, I need to see where it starts. Now, technically, I'm not supposed to stick in the number 1, but I need to see where the open circle is going to be on that graph. So I need to put it in anyway. So this time 3 times 1 plus 1, I get uh, 3 plus 1 is 4, which is the point 1, 4. And this one's going to be an open circle because it's not equal to that point. So 1 comma 4, email's going crazy here. And now the slope for this part is 3, so 3 over 1. What direction should I go in this time? For 3 over 1, I'm only using the part to the right of 1 because it's greater than 1. So I'm going to go up 1, 2, 3, and right 1. Up 1, 2, 3, right 1. And there's this portion of the graph. And I'm finished graphing g of x. OK, so let me review this. Talk about two different methods to graphing a piecewise function. Here's the first method. First method is basically what we just did. 
So step number one, instead of starting at the y-intercept, if it's a line, you're going to start at the domain's breaking point. For us, on the previous one, that was where x was equal to 1, okay? Use the slope to graph another point. Make sure it's going into the proper direction if it's greater than 1 or less than 1. So take a look at this animation here. So um, I start right there at 1, and this time I, it was less than 1, so I use the slope, negative 2, down 1, down 2, down 2, left 1, down 2, left 1. And then step 2, you just repeat that for each part of the piecewise function. So the other part was where it was greater than 1. It started at 4, gets an open circle, and the slope was up 3 and over 1. Okay, so that's the that's the method that we basically just used on the previous graph. Okay, here's a different one. Let's say we just graph the equations as we normally would. So that first equation was 2x minus 1. So you just graph 2x minus 1 starting at the y-intercept, right? So there's the graph. Okay, and then the second part, you go back and you erase the part that you don't need. So the part that we didn't need was everything that was bigger than 1, so you just go back and you erase that part. Okay, and then you just repeat this for each part of the graph. So the other part was uh, 3x plus 1, so I'd start at 1, go up 3, write 1, and so on, and then I would have to go back and I would have to erase everything to the left of that graph so I wouldn't have any overlaps. So there's the second method. Just graph the line as you normally would and just use your eraser and erase the part that you don't need. Okay? So here is your chance to graph one all by yourself. So here is your piecewise function. Graph that thing. Go ahead and pause the video and then come back and let's see if you did it correctly. I hope you have some graph paper. All right, uh, let's see how you did here. So the breaking point for your domain there is negative four. Half of your graph, graph is going to be to the left of negative 4, the other half to the right of negative 4. Okay, so I would take that negative 4 and I would stick it into that top equation and I would see what the output is and I get negative 4. Okay, so then I'm going to use the slope of negative 1 half. So usually I would go down 1 and right 2 for that. However, I only want the, other, the part of the graph that's going to the left, so I need to go up 1 and left 2, like so, and then connect that in the line. Really array. Anyways. Okay. Now, even though you're not supposed to, you want to stick in negative 4 into uh, the second equation to see where the open circle is going to be, and that should be at 1. So negative 4, 1, put an open circle, and the slope of this portion is just 1, and this part's going to go to the right. So up 1, right 1, and then draw your other ray. So there's the graph of that piecewise function. Okay, the last part of this, I don't know why this one's also called exercise 4, but anyway, we're going to write ourselves a piecewise function. So we evaluated the piecewise functions, we graphed them, and now we're actually going to write one. Okay, so the key thing here is to identify the point at which your domain breaks. So you have two different portions of your graph. And so for us, that's going to be right there at the origin. So part of our graph is going to be to the right of zero, and part of it to the left of zero. Now here's the thing. We haven't had, so far, a point that has overlapped on the same number. So what this means is we're going to take, say, the right half and make it equal to zero for the x's, and then the left half will say that it's not equal to zero. That way I don't have an overlap in the equations. So let's write this equation starting with f of x equals one big curly bracket like so. And now let's just take that part of the equation, the right side. Now if it's just a line, I need, to, I need two things to write the equation as a line. I need a slope and I need a y-intercept, okay? So, if I look at this, I see a slope of up 1, right 1. The slope is 1, so m equals 1. y-intercept is 0, so that's just the equation y equals x, right? This takes the place of y, so you don't have to write it, equals x, and now to the right of this, I'm just going to write the domain for that part. Well, we want everything to the right of 0, but we can go ahead and include 0 on this one. x is greater than or equal to 0. Okay. Now let's look over here at uh, the left side. I'll change colors here, make it nice and colorful. So again, I need a slope. I need a y-intercept. 
This time I'm going up one and left one, so my slope is a negative one. Still the y-intercept is zero. The equation's y equals negative x plus zero. You're gonna have to write it. Now, again, f of x takes the place of y. I write the rest of the equation right here, negative x. And the part of this graph for the domain is less than zero. x is less than zero. So what I want to call your attention to on this piecewise function, whenever I write it, I don't want to overlap the points. If on this one I say that it's greater than or equal to zero, on the second portion I don't want it to be equal to zero because I don't want it to be confusing as to what part of the equation you're supposed to stick zero in. Another question is, well, could you have made the bottom one equal to zero and the top one not equal to zero? Sure, you absolutely could because they end up on the same point. Okay.